East Coast, the trading name of the East Coast Main Line Company, was a British train operating company running the Intercity East Coast franchise on the East Coast Main Line between London, Yorkshire, North East England, and Scotland. East Coast ran long-distance intercity services from its central London terminus at London King's Cross on two primary routes, the first to Leeds and the second to Edinburgh via Newcastle with other services reaching into Yorkshire and northern and central Scotland. It commenced operations on the 14th of November 2009 and ceased on the 28th of February 2015. East Coast was a subsidiary of directly operated railways formed by the Department for Transport as an operator of last resort when National Express refused to provide further financial support to its National Express East Coast (NXEC) subsidiary and consequently lost its franchise. The franchise was re-nationalized on 14 November 2009, with the intention being that operations would return to a private franchisee by December 2013. In March 2013 the Secretary of State for Transport announced that this would occur in February 2015 instead. In January 2014, First Group, Keolis, Eurostar and Stagecoach, Virgin were announced as the shortlisted bidders for the new franchise. The franchise passed to Virgin Trains East Coast on 1 March 2015. Principal services London, Leeds This was the busiest East Coast service, half hourly, with one train per hour serving Peterborough, Doncaster, Wakefield Westgate and Leeds, while the other served Stevenage, Grantham, Doncaster, Wakefield Westgate and Leeds. At weekends, they called at Stevenage every two hours while Peterborough, Grantham, Newark, Doncaster and Wakefield were served hourly. <laughs> London, Newcastle. East Coast operated a half-hourly service between King's Cross and Newcastle one fast, one semi -fast throughout the day, departing from London on the hour and the half-hour. The top-of-the-hour trains were part of the London to Scotland services which ran as limited-stop expresses between London and Newcastle as seen below. The half-hour train called at Peterborough, Newark, Doncaster, York, Northallerton, Darlington, Durham and terminated at Newcastle, although there was an extension of this service to Edinburgh every two hours. At weekends, all daytime services to Newcastle continued through to Edinburgh, with some going non-stop. Late evening services terminated at Newcastle. <laughs> London, Edinburgh. This was East Coast's flagship route, serving the whole length of the East Coast Main Line, an hourly service from London to Edinburgh Waverley, calling at York, Darlington, Newcastle, Berwick-upon-Tweed and Edinburgh. Some of these trains also called at Peterborough. Occasionally there was a half-hourly service to Edinburgh with some Newcastle trains extended at peak hours. At weekends all services on the half-hour continued to Edinburgh from Newcastle. During the day, services to London King's Cross from Edinburgh ran every 30 minutes, one fast and one semi-fast. All trains called at Newcastle and most at Berwick-upon-Tweed, Darlington and York. In May 2011 East Coast reintroduced the historic Flying Scotsman service. This was an early morning service to London King's Cross with a journey time of four hours, departing Edinburgh Waverley at 5.40, calling only at Newcastle at 7.03 and arriving at London at 9.40. London, Newark, York An hourly service ran between King's Cross and Newark, calling at all intermediate stations. This was extended to York every two hours, serving Retford and Doncaster and at peak times was extended to Newcastle. These services operated only on weekdays. Additional services also start, terminated at Doncaster or Peterborough at peak times. Limited service <inaudible> London, Glasgow 
There was only one direct through train per day in each direction between King's Cross and Glasgow Central departing Glasgow at 6.50 and departing King's Cross at 15.30 as an extension of a London to Newcastle service also calling at Edinburgh. There were no East Coast service to Glasgow on Saturdays. <laughs> London, Aberdeen These trains were extensions to the hourly London to Edinburgh service. There were three trains per day each way between King's Cross and Aberdeen, departing at 10 o'clock the Northern Lights, 1400 and 1600 weekdays only, the journey time being just over seven hours. There was also one service per day in each direction between Leeds and Aberdeen. These services were operated by Intercity 125 sets, as the Edinburgh to Aberdeen line and York to Leeds section via Garforth were not electrified. This route crossed the historic Forth, Tay and Montrose bridges. <laughs> <laughs> London, Inverness This was an extension of a London to Edinburgh service with a daily service operating between King's Cross and Inverness, departing at 12 o'clock with the southbound service departing Inverness at 7.55 Sundays, named the Highland Chieftain. The journey took just over eight hours and was operated by Intercity 125 sets, as the line between Edinburgh and Inverness was not electrified. London, Bradford One train per day in each direction ran between Bradford Forster Square and King's Cross via Leeds. This used an electric intercity 225 train as the route was fully electrified. This service offered the fastest journey time of 1 hour 59 metres, only stopping at Wakefield West Gate on the way to London. London, Skipton There was a morning train from Skipton to King's Cross with an early evening return. This was an extension of the London to Leeds service. Though the line to Skipton was electrified throughout, the East Coast service to, from the town was initially operated using a diesel HST because the electrical infrastructure on the Leeds to Skipton line was insufficient to support a Class 91 locomotive in addition to the Class 333 electric multiple units that operated the local services from Leeds to Skipton. However, tests took place on 16 January 2011 for the operation of Intercity 225s on this service. From the timetable starting the 22nd of May 2011, the evening return train from King's Cross was worked by an Intercity 225 Monday, Fridays only. The Saturday run of the outward service was the only East Coast service out of Skipton not to call at Wakefield West Gate. After Leeds, this service took the route via Micklefield and Hambleton junctions to Doncaster. Although the other trains to, from Skipton used the Intercity 225, the Saturday run of the outward service used the Intercity 125 because the alternative route used was not fully electrified. <laughs> <laughs> London, Lincoln From May 2011, a direct train ran between King's Cross and Lincoln Central, with one service per day in each direction as an extension of the London – Newark service. This service used a diesel Intercity 125 set as the Nottingham to Lincoln line was not electrified. <laughs> London – Hull The Hull Executive ran between King's Cross and Hull, with one train per day each way. This service also used Intercity 125 sets, as the Hull line was not electrified. More frequent services between King's Cross and Hull were operated by first Hull trains. <laughs> <laughs> London, Harrogate There was a daily morning departure from Harrogate to King's Cross and an evening return. This service used a diesel Intercity 125 set as the Harrogate line was not electrified. <laughs> Named trains East Coast operates a number of named passenger trains, including
Topic: <laughs> Rolling stock. East Coast inherited the rolling stock operated by NXEC, comprising Class 43 diesel sets with their Mark III coaching stock Intercity 125, and Class 91 electric locomotives and Mark IV coaches Intercity 225. The original franchise holder, GNER, undertook a major refurbishment of its rolling stock from 2003, which it titled, Project Mallard. Between 2003 and 2006, the Mark IV carriage fleet was upgraded and refurbished, while work started on refurbishing the Mark III coaches under GNER in early 2007. This work continued under NXEC, with the final Intercity 125 set completed in October 2009. Until October 2010, East Coast offered free Wi Fi to passengers in both first and standard class. From 5 October 2010, a charge of £4.99 per hour or £9.99 for 24 hours was introduced for standard class passengers, with a 15-minute free allowance. As part of an overhaul of the Intercity 225 fleet, they were repainted into East Coast Silver Livery. The repaint was started in June 2010 with the first full set excluding Loco being released on 30 July 2010. The idea is that a plain base livery can be easily customized for any future operator of the franchise. Topic: <coughs> Cancelled future fleet. Originally East Coast were to receive 5 class 180 Adelante DMUs. Due to a reduction in the number of extra services, and with directly operated railways stating its unhappiness with the Class 180 units, they were sent to First Great Western for use on the Cotswold Line instead. East Coast investigated using 111 Coach Pendolino from July 2011 but decided instead to lease an extra HST set from East Midlands Trains from May 2011, bringing the number of HSTs leased to 14. Topic. Locomotive naming The fleet of Class 91 locomotives inherited by East Coast has carried various names up until 2008. In 2011, in response to customer requests, East Coast resumed the practice. It began by naming 91109 as Sir Bobby Robson, unveiled in a ceremony at Newcastle Station on 29 March 2011 by his widow Elsie and Alan Shearer, patron of the Sir Bobby Robson Foundation, which the company was also now a supporter of. On 2 June 2012, 91110 was renamed, Battle of Britain Memorial Flight. By Carol Vorderman at the National Railway Museum as part of the Railfest 2012 event. On 16 February 2013, 91107 was renamed Skyfall and temporarily returned to its original 91007 number to mark the James Bond film of the same name, which featured trains extensively and became the highest grossing film of all time in the United Kingdom. On 14 October 2014, 91111 was unveiled to mark the 100th anniversary of World War I. The specially designed East Coast locomotive, named For the Fallen, carries a livery filled with images, stories, and tributes to regiments and people who served in them across the East Coast route. Performance The public performance measure PPM shows the percentage of trains which arrive at their terminating station on time. It combines figures for punctuality and reliability into a single performance measure. The moving annual average PPM for East Coast by the end of its franchise P12 was 88.2%. Topic: Profitability. East Coast paid back over one billion pounds to the government over the course of its franchise. Topic: Loyalty scheme. East Coast inherited the Escape loyalty scheme from National Express, which was eventually rebranded as East Coast Rewards. 
The original scheme involved giving benefits to customers who spent over £1,750 in a three-month period on East Coast tickets. Benefits included first-class lounge access for the member and a guest, discounts at partner retailers, 20% off online advance ticket booking and a large number of free first-class travel tickets. As this scheme had a high barrier to entry East Coast launched a revamped loyalty scheme in 2011 which was points-based and included all spend on the East Coast website even if booking travel for other operators. The scheme meant rewards such as free travel were now within reach of a greater number of passengers as only a modest spend was required to earn benefits. The scheme initially launched with online bookings only but was then expanded to cover season tickets and business travel. TV series In November 2013 Sky One started to broadcast a documentary series, "'All Aboard East Coast Trains". One of the Intercity 225 sets was painted in a special blue livery which includes faces of employees that feature in the programs in order to promote the series. Final day of service On 28 February 2015 East Coast's final operating day Virgin branding and posters began to be implemented at stations. East Coast's website, Twitter and Facebook were updated overnight to reflect Virgin's branding.